Whether you're a gigantic enterprise or a small team at a startup or even a lone developer, if you're using Google Cloud, there's one thing you all have in common. Your project will use and depend on service accounts. Everyone uses them, but what are they? What do they do? Where do they come from? And why should you care? These are all important questions that we have got to know the answers to. I'm here to help you figure out what's what with service accounts. Okay, so service accounts, what exactly are they? To answer that, let's take a look at something you might already be familiar with, a user account. This account represents Jahira, the lead engineer on your team. She accesses the account with the email address and password associated with it, and access to it is shared with no one else. It has some IAM roles associated with it that grant it permissions to do some fun stuff like manage Kubernetes clusters, create compute instances, and configure monitoring on the project. For as long as Jahira works on the team, she can do whatever the IAM policy allows. And if she leaves the team, well, her account would be disabled so that it couldn't be used anymore. That's a user account. A service account, on the other hand, is an identity that a compute instance or an application can use to run API requests on your behalf. There are a few major differences between a user account and a service account. Like Jahira's user account, a service account has an assigned email, but instead of a password, it can only be authenticated using a private public RSA key pair, and it can't be logged in via a browser. Service accounts typically represent virtual machines and applications, and while user accounts should never be shared, permission can be granted to users to impersonate service accounts, allowing multiple users to access everything that a service account can access. Service accounts are granted IAM roles to perform certain actions and access certain resources in your project, just like a user account, although they're usually executing automated actions and might have multiple processes dependent on them. That means you'll need to be extra careful when you edit their access or if you want to disable or delete them. So there are two types of service accounts. Well, first, there are Google Managed Service Accounts. You might see these sometimes referred to as service agents. These are service accounts that Google automatically creates and manages for some Google Cloud services. For example, right off the bat, your project is likely to have a Google APIs service agent. This is a service account that runs internal Google processes on your behalf. There could be more Google managed service accounts that exist in your project, but you'll only see them in your IAM policy or audit logs when you enable an API or a service that needs it. With Google managed service accounts, you technically can change and revoke their roles, but that's generally not a great idea because it could cause some services to stop working correctly. So the second type of service account that we have is a user managed service account. This is a service account that you explicitly create using identity and access management. You choose a name and the roles associated with it yourself. In addition to any that you create, user managed service accounts include default service accounts. These are user managed service accounts that are created when you use some Google Cloud services that are meant to help you to get started. Currently, a default service account is created for App Engine and any service that uses App Engine and for Compute Engine and any service that uses Compute Engine. The format for those default service accounts is typically project number dash compute at developer dot g service account dot com for Compute Engine and project ID at app spot dot g service account dot com for App Engine. Default service accounts are generally granted the editor role on your project. For production workloads, this might be a bit much. So it's recommended that you create your own service accounts for these services and apply more restricted roles to them. So how can we see these service accounts in our Google Cloud project? If you want to see all of the user managed service accounts that currently exist on your project, you can use the Google Cloud console under IAM or through a CLI using the gcloud command. The command gcloud iam service accounts list will nicely list your user managed service accounts, display names, emails, and whether they're disabled. If you want to see all of your service accounts, including Google managed ones, the command gcloud project get iam policy followed by your project ID is your best bet. This will spit out your project's iam policy, the roles currently assigned to the accounts on your project. This is going to include user accounts, user managed service accounts, and Google Managed Service Accounts, as long as they have roles assigned to them. We have only begun to scratch the surface of service accounts here. 
there are still some other things worth considering when we talk about service accounts. In this series, we're going to learn more about creating them, getting rid of them, effectively managing them, properly securing them, and using them for development. If you like this video, hit subscribe or leave us a comment below. See you next time.